right, all right, all right. What is up, everybody, and welcome, welcome to another episode of Model Monday Live. How's everybody doing tonight? Great to see everybody here. And uh, we're going to get started in just a few minutes, and we'll introduce our special guest at that time. But uh, just wanted to say hello to everyone in the chat. What's up, Airwick? And that's it. Airwick and Allness. It's the only people in the chat. <laughs> as, uh, as we've talked about before, Monday night, 9 o'clock, uh, maybe not the best time slot for Model Monday Live. But we're going to figure it out as we go along in this beautiful Season 5 of Model Monday Live. So uh, with that, let's get into it here. Let me just take a look at our PowerPoint. We're going to introduce our special guest here, like I said, in a moment. He is none other than the world speed modeling champion, speed modeling champion of the world uh we got t-i-j-m-a-n one in the chat let's bring him up on stage allness welcome welcome thank you so much for joining us here today how are you doing hey toby so excited to be here it's amazing being here with you it's amazing being on the show looking forward to what we're going to talk about tonight Man, I think it's going to be just awesome. I got to tell you, I think we're going to have an awesome time tonight talking about uh, all things on shape and 3D CAD and tournament related and uh, maybe even learn a little bit more about you. Uh, one thing I did want to ask you about, I know that in this flyer here that I've got shown on the screen right now, you're wearing uh, this shirt that looks like it says SolidWorks, but uh, I know that when you were in the tournament, you were representing on shape. Is there uh, any kind of a reason why you wanted to use that shirt in the flyer? Well, you know, I'm going to be 100% honest. I actually only noticed the shirt after submitting it, but um, I, I, I know I like that photo. But in any case, the story behind the shirt, so it says SolidWorks on there. I was actually a teaching assistant for my university's CAD course a little bit. So there we use SolidWorks. Um, I was helping people learn SolidWorks. And as TAs, we all, one of the perks was we got a, solid, a shirt that actually says it's SolidWorks until it's solid doesn't. So maybe later I can show the design. <laughs> but in any case, that's all in good spirits. You know, I love SolidWorks. I love all sorts of CAD. We um, love all sorts of CAD using here. SolidWorks, but we all know that sometimes, you know, it <laughs> sometimes works. Iron Man is in the chat, says, all this, my man. Is there an on-shape t-shirt? What do you think? You got any on-shape t-shirts? Oh, today I'm just representing the hammering man from the seattle art museum but um okay i like it i like it <laughs> probably should have worn an on-shape shirt but also i want to be a little bit neutral here yeah whatever man you know it's all, all cat are welcome here you know that's how it is we're trying to uh unite the clans we're gonna get everybody together uh it's gonna be one unified cad system in the end that's what we're all, all that's where this is all going towards all this i just i just uh revealed my secret plan for all of this so we're gonna uh, tonight we're gonna talk about some some uh, CAD speed modeling challenges. We're gonna give some challenges out to the chat today. We're gonna find out who is the fastest person in the chat tonight. Uh, we are going to do some. Let me just move this chat over here. I don't want to miss anything you guys are saying. We're gonna do some uh, discussion with the champion here because uh, you might be the fastest in the chat tonight, but you are not the world champion. We got the world champion with us here as our special guest tonight uh, with Allness. Uh, we're gonna talk a little bit about the 2022 tournament and how Allness became the champion. And of course, we're gonna interact with the best chat ever. Iron Man says, forget neutral, on shape rules. So there you go. If you're using OnShape, if you're using SolidWorks, if you're using any 3D CAD system, let's uh, make sure that we get ourselves the correct hardware to run that CAD. And uh, there's nothing more frustrating in SolidWorks than buying a new piece of hardware, a new computer, opening up your favorite assembly and immediately running into an error message like this. Your system is critically low on memory. Uh, if you want to avoid running into error messages like this, you need to get with a hardware partner that's going to take care of you. And uh, there's nobody better in the game right now than SolidBox. They'll help you go through and spec out a computer that's going to work for you, depending on your needs. You know, if you're doing simulation, maybe you need something a little heavier. If you're just doing basic parts, uh, basic prototype design, maybe you get something a little bit lighter. But either way, they're going to get that computer in-house. They're going to make tweaks to Windows, tweaks to the BIOS, and just overall make sure that it is optimized for engineering CAD and CAM. So, so uh, regardless of what CAD system you're using, you could always use a little bit of a boost from the hardware. You can check out mysolidbox.com. They will definitely take care of you. Let them know that Toby sent you. If you or if your team is looking to buy new hardware, check out mysolidbox.com. They are a great organization. And most of the time when they take on a customer, it's a customer for life. And uh, I can't think of a stronger testimonial than that. Let's see here. Finally, oh, wow. <laughs> so, Court... Corzing is saying, finally, a nice time to stream. 
for us Pacific guys. So there you go. I was talking trash on this time slot at the beginning, but uh, there are some people out there who like it. And I was thinking of you guys uh, out there on the West Coast when I picked this time slot. I know that last season we did it at 2 o'clock p.m., uh, and I know that can be a little bit rough, but I don't know. What better way to start the week than a, a nice mid-morning live stream with you, Zalthobi? We'll figure this thing out. Honest, what time do you think the uh, the live stream should be? Oh, I have no idea. High pressure, I mean, come if on. If I knew when was the best time to run live streams, then I'd be a millionaire. But I'm not yeah. a millionaire, so I don't know what the best time is to run a live stream. <laughs> well, you know what they say. Even a broken clock is correct twice a day. So maybe I should just throw a dart. <laughs> I think I might end up streaming at, I don't know, 3 a.m. Eastern time. 3 a.m. East then... Coast. All right. That's going to be season six. We're going to lock that in. <laughs> All right, guys, here we go. Here's our first challenge of the night for everybody in the chat. I'm going to show you a 2D print. I'm going to challenge you to turn that into a 3D model. And uh, once you do that, you are going to calculate the mass of that 3D model. And you're going to enter that mass in the chat. We got Rich K in the chat. What's up, Rich? How you doing? How you doing? He says, go on us, go easy on us today. All this is probably going to be hanging out with me, talking shop a little bit during these modeling challenges. So that's at least one competitor who is out of the field for you, Rich K. All right, here we go. The basic rules are you can use any CAD package. All CAD are welcome here. And uh, you want to make sure you input density and output mass, meaning make sure your CAD package can do that. There are some out there still that can't do that. Uh, that's not going to work for you in this particular contest. And of course, make sure you use the specified precision. Uh, all these are in whole numbers uh, tonight. They're all in grams, they're all in whole numbers, so shouldn't have to worry too much about that one. And the first person to answer correctly in the chat wins. So you create a 3D model, you answer the question, what is the mass of this part? And you enter that mass in the chat, and the first person to answer correctly is declared the winner for the night. These are the units that we work in, in inch pound seconds and MMGS, millimeter gram seconds. And these are the materials we use with their associated densities. If you're using a different CAD package, you might need to uh, specify the density correctly. It might be a little bit different than what we're using here in, uh, in SolidWorks. And finally, the advanced rules. This is meant to be fun and good spirited. There are times when I like miss a dimension or something. I will make a mistake uh, here and there. So it's meant to be fun and good spirited. If it looks like it's uh, obviously supposed to be tangent and I didn't call it out as tangent, like it's tangent. If it's if it looks like these two holes are obviously supposed to be horizontal, then they are horizontal. Uh, there was one print a couple of weeks ago I got myself into trouble on because the two holes were like two millimeters not horizontal and they kind of look like they were. Uh, and so I should have added a magenta note. Okay, and of course the Ivan exploit is permitted. Uh, you know, let's see if you can do the, the challenges without using the exploit, just for a little bit of extra fun. All right, here we go. This first challenge is going to go live here in three. Two, one, go. What is the mass of this part in XXXX grams? This, this part has a tolerance of plus or minus one gram. And you guys can see kind of what this part looks like. And you can try to come up with a good method of creating this part. Uh, it is in MMGS. It is 1060 aluminum with the density that's specified down there in the uh, in the title block. And it is called undermount. Uh, it looks like this is some kind of a bracket that hooks onto an existing curved part, probably bolts into it. Um, there's a through hole, the 20, 20 millimeter diameter through hole that goes through both of those walls that are sticking down. And that through hole is co-radial. Um, so it's just one continuous through hole. So I think I correctly use parentheses on this drawing, which is always a victory for me when I can use parentheses correctly on a drawing. Iron Man says, I want to see Honest do all these tonight. There you go, Honest. <laughs> we'll, we'll, we'll see what happens, right? All right. Yeah, I have to admit, I mean, if I were modeling again, I don't know. <laughs> I'm not sure if I'd be the fastest here. There's some pretty crazy fast people in the chat. I agree. It's intimidating getting very intimidating these days all these speedsters out there all right i hope that was enough time for you guys to do a screen capture using uh i forgot to say make sure you use like windows snipping tool or uh zoom it or no no not zoom it snag it or mw snap or some other similar cad program uh screen capture program so you can capture this and then you can do it in whatever cad program you are using but maybe move it over to your second monitor so you can still hear 
Honest and I talking through a little bit of the 2022 tournament. It's over. Honest, you are the champion. Congratulations. Woo! You did it. Thank you so much, Toby. I have to admit, I'm still a little bit surprised. You know, seeing how there were some incredibly strong competitors, and I honestly think if the tournament were run again, it would be anyone's game. It was really, really close. Well, it was pretty intense, I gotta say, and uh, it was great having you in there. Um, I was really happy to see you win. You absolutely earned it, you know, and it's not like, uh, you know, it's not just like it's a one day thing. And of course, it's not like it's a uh, uh, one match thing either. Right. It's like you got to you got to really have your, your act together, not just on that first day, but on all of the days of the tournament. And, uh, you know, you were you were uh, up against some pretty tough competition. And I wanted to talk through some of that competition with you. And I do have. Some notes here. Did my research, so we're gonna we're gonna get deep into it here in just a moment. Uh, but uh, overall, I just wanted to ask you, what was it um, that first attracted you to this idea of speed running, of being in a tournament? Like, what was kind of the evolution of that? How did you get involved, and how did you hear about the tournament? And uh, you know, what was it that when you heard about it that you were like, oh, that sounds like something I, I'd be really into? That's a great question, Toby. I'd say. Really what brought me to it is that I love CAD. You know, I love modeling things. I like, you know, making cool models. I like learning how other people approach their models. Um, I like improving my skills with CAD modeling too. And I was looking for more drawings online. Um, I was cranking through a bunch of drawings, you know, making interesting engines that I found online, interesting, you know, like whatever practice PDFs. Um, and then I found Toby's channel where it's not just doing a practice model, but it's doing a practice model on a timeline with other professionals where you get to learn from the professionals and you also have to work pretty quickly. So that was super exciting to me. That's kind of how I found the tournament. I was looking around online and then um, I found Toby's channel and then I and then Toby talked about the tournament. I was like, no brainer. I, I got to participate. This is way too cool not to. Well, I was very glad to have you there. I mean, I know that I, I, I like to think of the one that we did last year as kind of like the definitive starting point. But I know that there were several tournaments that we did before that that were a slightly different format. We did it all in one night. I think those were, you know, not that they weren't, they were absolutely legitimate and we were absolutely against tough competition. But I think those were more equivocal to like a LAN party. Like a small group of us got together and we did this together, like just to kind of see how things would work. And it was, it was very cool. Uh, and I was very happy with the results of those. But I think the one that we did last year was more of a, you know, we did, I think uh, 11 countries were represented. It was uh, 22 or 32 competitors. Uh, plus a few extra with like people uh, dropping out or subbing in or whatever. Uh, so I think that it was really like the definitive tournament. And I was glad to have you there. But I do remember in those old days of doing Model Monday Live and having you in there in the chat and doing these competitions similar to what the people are doing here tonight, you know, with uh, kind of competing and, and trying to figure out uh are they better than the other people in the chat? When you were doing these uh, challenges, like what the people are doing here tonight, did you ever get nervous when it was just you at your computer and like all you're doing is going into the chat? Oh yeah, absolutely. You know, it's I'm thinking, wait, hold on a minute. Will I be able to keep up in the future? You know, is this model going to turn out all right? I mean, it's even it, even when you're working alone, you know, it's still kind of nervous because you want to make sure you get the right result. It's not a good feeling to get one wrong, two wrong, three wrong in a row. And at that point, you start questioning, wait, you know, am I, am I really actually decent at CAD? Or, so I guess it can also be, you can put a lot of pressure on yourself <laughs> in that sense, too. Yeah, even when it's just you. It's like, it, it's very interesting. You know, I, I I, haven't been on that side of the screen yet. So I, I, uh, you know, I mean, I have like in some other context, but I haven't been on that side of the screen yet in this particular venue. So I'm always curious if that that same kind of nerves, like I'm sure that it's very nerve wracking when you know that you're in front of everyone when you're sharing your screen. But even when you're alone, these guys tonight, uh, I'll bet that they are, you know, that they are, uh, you know, getting into it. We got some chat coming in here. Speaking of the chat, uh, let's see here. Eric W, is on shape good enough? Yeah, absolutely it's good enough. Eric W, I want to learn 3D, but I don't want a subscription. Well, you can try on shape free. That's a great place to get started. I think it's like onshape.com slash free also. So if not, I'm sure you can just look it up. Uh, let's see here. Honest, uh, you're uh, Iron Man saying, Honest, you are too humble. Stop it. You are the best ever. That's very nice. Uh, let's see here. When's the next tournament? Uh, we might have, we'll see if we have time to talk about that later tonight. And Eric says, I'm new. Sorry for the silly questions. No silly questions at all, Eric. Uh, all are welcome here. If you're new to CAD, be sure to check out the this YouTube channel, Too Tall Toby, the practice models. That's a great place to get started. There's also a lot of content where I go through and I model stuff um, in the tutorials 
playlist. So if you look at the tutorials playlist, you'll see how I talk through how I'm modeling stuff. Uh, Airwick coming in with the very first answer here already. So very impressive, Airwick. And uh, let's talk a little bit more about the structure of this 2022 tournament. So um, I don't know, honest, are you able to see the screen that I'm sharing? Are you watching on like a monitoring or anything? Okay. Yeah. So I'm just showing the different brackets that we had. So like I said, we had 32 people in the tournament uh, in tournament uh, in that started in uh, August. I think it was August 13th. It started 2022. And we had these different brackets. We had the black bracket where we had eight runners. We had the blue bracket. That's the one that you were in uh, where we had eight runners. We had the red colored bracket where we had eight runners and we had the mustard colored bracket where we had eight runners and so if we go back to that blue bracket uh the first match that you had was up against maaz from pakistan and this in this matchup uh when i went back and i i went through and i did my research because i was curious if you ever felt like you were you know maybe at risk of elimination in this entire tournament but what i noticed was that you just swept through each of your matches like you didn't have any defeats and so what I'm talking about here is that um, on August 27th, we have this uh, CAD versus CAD matchup here. And again, you can see this on the on my YouTube channel. I have the recordings of these matchups. And what we do is we, we take two people, two CAD experts, and we pit them against one another. And so you can see here that uh, in this case, I said, here's the drawing. You know, like maybe we'll look at this one here. Here's the drawing, this drawing of this uh, this weird bracket that has these feet on the bottom and what I challenged our two CAD experts to do is to attempt to come up with a strategy to create this model and they had to do it in front of everybody and they're sharing their screen and the way that our our challenges work is that you actually have uh, the opportunity to get it wrong once um, and then after you get it wrong once you can uh, you know you come back and you can answer it a second time and then if you happen to lose that matchup then you know the other person wins and they get a little green dot here so you can see that allness has a green dot in this first match uh, back on August uh, August 27th and then Allness went on to win this run as well win this match as well so Allness got his two wins here he got the victory cat and he was able to secure his spot moving on from the round of 32 to the round of 16. Well, when I was going back through and I was doing my research, what I found was that when we got to the round of 16 and you went up against uh, Five Lacks, who was subbing in for uh, another user, you were able to, to clean sweep him as well. And so when we when we uh, saw that match happen between Allness and MAZ, Allness was able to take out MAZ. He got up against Cam, but it actually got replaced with Five Lacks and Allness was able to defeat him as well. Two to zero. And then once again, when he went up against Walrus Gumboot on November 19th, once again, two to zero. So I have to say, I think I agree with Iron Man sentiment that you're being a little too humble. I think that uh, you definitely brought it. You set the bar very high and that's what we want. You know, when we do this tournament again, we want to make sure that people know that, uh, you know, we're not messing around in here. This is the legit world championship and this is the legit world champion here. And this, this, this is not easy competition, you know. You saw the match. The matches with Five Lacks and Cam Smith were intense. And the match with you and Five Lacks was super intense, too. And you guys were both flying. And so, uh, yeah, you you crushed, bro. Oh, thanks, Toby. So along the way, were there were there any uh, spots that, you know, you felt like surprised or nervous or was there any like any scheduling conflicts or anything that you ran into in any of these matches because i know this is like saturday august 27th saturday october 22nd saturday uh november 19th it's pretty early in the morning for you right it's like six in the morning when these are running yeah well fortunately no one does anything on the west coast at six in the morning on saturdays so <laughs> you have that time slot free sweet okay that's good feedback i'm gonna remember that for next year that's very good to know uh, yeah, I have to admit, waking up that early, though, I wouldn't consider it fun, necessarily. Yeah, okay. Maybe an advantage, though. Maybe you came into it, you know, wide awake, and some of these uh, other other people, maybe it's a little bit later in the night. I know that, you know, MAZ was in Pakistan, so who knows what time it was for him. So, of course, as we're going through and we're talking about this, if you guys in the chat have any questions for Allness, uh, you let us know. Uh, but at that point, Allness went on to the semifinals, which was on December 3rd, and he went up against Tom Smith. And Tom Smith is a multi-year uh, model mania champion. He is uh, he's comes from the old school speed modeling. He really knows what it's all about. And so you finally with him, you didn't suffer a defeat, but you suffered your first draw. And so neither you nor Tom were able to come up with the correct answer on one of those challenges. Um, and uh, let's see if I can get past this ad here and we'll see if see if we can see that a little bit of that match up between you and Tom. 
And this was during the finals, too. So that must have been at least a little bit nerve-wracking, uh, getting into the finals and uh, ending up... Oh, actually, you know what? I don't have this one queued up. Yeah. So getting into the finals there and having a, a little bit of a, a hiccup there on that one model. What do you think happened there during that grouping of models? Do you think it was just just the pressure? Yeah, I think ironically with speedballing, if you go too fast, you'll actually start going slower. Where if you go really fast, you know, you don't look at the drawing, you make a plan, figure out what are all the tricky features I might miss? How am I going to approach it? You know, how will I make sure I don't paint myself into a corner? If you don't take the time to do that, it's going to cost you a lot more time down the line and you might not even get a correct result out. So I think what really happened is, you know, like as a tournament's going on, it's like, oh, I have to go faster, I have to go faster, I have to go faster. And that, at some point, makes you go slower. That's interesting. So is that something you think you might, uh, did, did you feel yourself kind of like adjusting that during that final grouping of matches? Did you did you realize like, oh, I got to just take a deep breath. I got to just slow down. I realized it, but I mean, I didn't necessarily practice what I preach. <laughs> I again did the same thing where I got two things wrong in the finals again in the first round. So that really spooked me. I was thinking, oh no, you know, at this point, I'm not making correct models anymore. Sure, I'm making them quickly. But the point is make quick correct models, not just quick bad models. Well, I don't think we could have asked for a better matchup in that final matchup. You know, the semifinals in your bracket was you versus Tom Smith. You were able to defeat Tom Smith uh, at, you know, two games to one tie to zero. And then you got into the absolute finals against the crusher, Ivan the Reasonable, who has won this tournament in the past. He's a former champion who, uh, you know, has absolutely proven himself and who surprisingly works in SolidWorks with zero toolbars. He doesn't use any toolbars. And so, you know, that was a pretty epic setup for that final match. And like you said, when we when we got into that final match, it was you versus Ivan. And the first round, it seemed like uh, Ivan was able to pull ahead because of mistakes that you made uh, you you know you were allowed to get one answer incorrect and you got that incorrect answer and then you did the second incorrect answer and then it was just up to Ivan to come up with the right answer and he was able to kind of take his time he had that, that little bit of a opportunity to breathe but I gotta say after that there was like no looking back for you like you guys got into that second drawing that perforated plate uh, drawing and you just like right away had this had the you know the plan for that one the strategy yeah i'm pretty sure some on shape developers would rip my head off about how i went about that because there's some way nicer ways to do it in on shape i went and i did a whole bunch of solid modeling stuff i could have just done one quick surface sweep a quick fill a thicken and boom it would have been the part but i decided to do it in a really complicated way because i didn't take the time to take a step back and think about what's the best way to do this it still ended up just barely going a little bit faster than my competitor but i mean it was still really close and he got a mass in before me and i i re the video and i can't tell what mistake he made so i mean that really could have gone either way he yeah you know it's funny is that there was a dimension that was 1.4 instead of 1.5 and it really should have been 1.5 like the whole rest of the model was all in quarter inch increments but i needed to move that dimension in a little bit so that the holes wouldn't generate a zero thickness error and so I moved it into 1.4, and when he got to that that feature, he dimensioned it at 1.5, and he just was like, "Da!" Like, oh, and they didn't, it, it wasn't so like, close. yeah, you would have won the tournament then. You know, it, that would have been it. That would have right been there. it. Yeah, Pretty sweet. And there were a lot of moments like that, you know, like the I was really anticipating the uh, the Victor K. Oh, we got Ivan in the chat. He says, "Ouch, bad memories." Oh, right, right at this moment, he's joining in. Yeah, I mean, I know there was like the Victor K. Um, uh, Gerben matchup that there were there were some moments in that too where it's like it could have gone either way. And I think the cool thing about this format of having you know having one versus one, having you guys look at the same print, and then having you guys try to figure out what is you know what is correct, like what is the correct strategy, is really interesting because it 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 puts that extra element of pressure where it's like, yeah, I want to look at it and I want to think about it and I want to figure out like, oh, like you said, just do a sweep and then do a fill and then boom, you're done. But it's like, while you're taking the time to look at that, the other guy might be almost done with the model, you know? And so you just have all this pressure like, oh, oh I don't know what to do next, I don't know what to do next. And I just, I'm really enjoying this format and I'm excited to see, you know, where we go with it next uh, because this is uh, this is pretty epic, and some of these matchups are absolutely epic. And uh, you know that final setup with you and Ivan that that there was that perforated plate model, and then there was that final model. I actually three D printed it. I don't have it handy here, but that that final model uh, just really uh, 
really was a cool model and, and you were able to come through with the strategy on that one. Uh, I even got a little bit hung up going up into the angle section of that final model and you were just able to cruise right through it. And that was it. That's And that's kind of how it goes. Like there's, a, there's an element of luck in this thing too, where sometimes th there'll be a model that you'll see and you'll just right away be like, I, I know how to do that one. Like it just clicks and it might not click as much with the other person, even though they're perfectly capable. And sometimes it goes the other way too. You know, the other person ends up getting that like quote unquote lucky break. And that's, you know, that's the other cool thing about these things being 1v1. Can the competitors see one another's screens in real time in the competition? What do you think about that on this? Can you see the other person's screen? Well, if you have the YouTube stream up, you can, but that depends on having an additional monitor, you know, so we have to have a pretty crazy setup to see that, but yeah. As a competitor, would you be able to, if you had the YouTube stream up, would you be able to uh, profitably look at the other person's progress? Or do you think it would just be more trouble than it's worth? Oh, well, you know, the thing is, if you're spending your time looking at what your competitor is doing, that's time that you're spending not modeling. And there's a very, very small chance that you can actually take that and go back and change the model as you're doing it. You know, um, on the other hand, you know, it's, it's very terrifying to see someone who's like, oh, you know, this person's one or two features ahead, you know, that, that's a lot more scary. So I guess in that sense, you know, it's like, it'd be quite hard to get an advantage out of it, but also it's quite easy to get a very real scare out of it. <laughs> yeah, yeah, so it might be, it might be more trouble than it's worth. Uh, excellent question from the chat, excellent question. Uh, and Eric, who is uh, a regular in these uh, in these competitions as well, is saying, you know, th that, yeah, it's, it's, um, it's hard to start the part quickly and then starting, you know, ending up going down the wrong path and then having to decide, like, what do I do now? Do I just scrap this and start over? Or do I keep trying? So, yeah. Yeah. Mandy was thinking the same thing you were thinking, the scare aspect. So what do you think about this number? One, 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 two, three. You think that's a cool number? Oh, seems like an interesting number. I Was that one of the model numbers? I can't remember. Was it a date? I'm sorry, I my brain is frazzled. There's <laughs> it's fine. I'll give you a hint. It's not anything from the past. It's not any. Oh, it's not from the past. That's very interesting. Very interesting. It seems to be. Is it the future then? It is from the future. It's a number from oh. the future. Tonight we are it... officially announcing for the very first time to the world that we have locked in the final date of the tournament this year. The tournament will conclude on November 11th, 2023. So mark it in your calendars, get that on your calendar. Uh, it's gonna, if you work back from that, it's basically gonna be every Saturday until, uh, we'll probably start in the middle of July. We're, we're trying to figure out like which dates we're gonna skip. It's not gonna be every single Saturday, but this is officially the tournament date for the World Championship 2023. So all this, this is gonna be your chance to defend the championship, to take the title for two years in a row. The first person who's, who's ever done that, if you do it, no pressure. Uh, but everybody else is going to be watching your content and watching what you did and, and what worked and what didn't work. And so they're going to be fierce this year, I think. Well, I am beyond excited about this. A whole entire year of great CAD challenges leading up into an extremely exciting tournament with the best of the best going against each other. I mean, you know, seeing all of the models that people are making and posting on YouTube already, you know, based on your videos, Toby, I'm worried I may not even get into the championship. So <laughs> I think it's going to be an absolutely incredible year um, of some really exciting speed modeling. Yeah, yeah. I mean, you know, on that note, there's there's no free passes, unfortunately. I mean, even for the former champion, there's no free passes. There's going to be a qualification process, and uh, we're gonna get we're gonna get everybody seated this year, and it's gonna be it's gonna there's gonna be some enhancements from last year in the tournament logistics too. So uh, I'm very excited. I'm very honored to be able to announce that with you here on the chat on the uh, as our special guest tonight. So this is it, baby. Eleven, eleven. We're going for it. Ivan says, got to run here. Great to see you guys. That's all he wanted to know. He just tuned in to find out when the tournament was going to be. And now he's like, okay, I'm good. See you guys later. All right. Well, you guys, don't forget to continue to support the channel. Uh, if you want to support the channel financially, you can use Super Chat, Super Thanks, or PayPal. Uh, always wonderful when we get some financial support. And uh, there's a lot of different avenues you can use to do that. So I thank you for that. But another way that you can support the channel is to remember that we do have shirts. We have the softest shirts in the CAD game, the Two Tall Toby shirts. Uh, they are black. They are super, super soft. And everybody's wearing them. If you go to an upcoming technical conference, you don't want to be the only person.
person not wearing one of these shirts. So you may as well get over there to TooTallToby.com, click on the merch link, and, uh, you know, get, get your shirts, buy a two-pack, buy a six-pack, let everybody know. Victor K is here in the chat. Hell yeah is here in the chat and says, hell yeah. And Iron Man says, allness rules. That's very nice of you, Iron Man. Thank you. Uh, and I th I'm saying thank you. He's saying it to you, but I'm saying thank you for you. Yeah, huge thanks, Iron Man. I don't know. If you'd meet me in person, you might think different. <laughs> <laughs> I doubt that to be true, but we'll find out. We'll find out on 11-11, right? We'll see. All right, here we go. Answer number one. Let's see how everybody did on this one. So this was uh, an interesting challenge. You can see this is, uh, it's kind of like a, I don't know what this thing is. It's an under, it's an undermount, right? So it's got a little rectangular hole in the top uh, that goes through. It's got uh, these kind of three mounting holes on the one side, which is curved. So it's probably mounting to some other piece of equipment here. How would we model this thing? All this, I'll tell you how I would model it. And you can tell me if you would, you would do the same thing. So a lot of times in a model like this, uh, we have to look at what's going on with the thickness of some of these bosses to decide if we want to maybe just create the rectangular plate first, or if we want to make a slightly more complicated sketch where we include this geometry that's going down the side and up and down and around, uh, kind of all try to do that all in one feature. Of course, if we did that, you know, essentially we would be sketching this view here. And I think that's a perfectly valid approach for this particular model. Uh, like I said, the other approach might be to just create the flat plate and then get in there and start creating these two end plates. So I'd probably start off with something like that. The model does have symmetry, so I would create it from the center outward. So extrude that out to this depth of 120 here. Then, like I said, if I made that whole shape from that side, this is going to be an entire uh, rectangular section here. So that means I'm going to need to lop this off to make it triangular on this side. Uh, I would include that radius. I've got the height here to that uh, center of that hole. And so then that would free me up to come in and create this additional feature here, sticking out a little bit. A lot of times I create all of my bosses first, and then I go back in and start creating my cut extrudes. So at that point, I would have all my bosses, and I'd be ready to go through and do the cut extrudes. What do you think about that approach, Champ? I think it's a great approach. Yeah, looking for all those profiles where you can just read the dimensions off of the drawing and start making a sketch that follows that, it's not just fast for you, but it also means that you embed the design intent into the model. So if this were a real world engineering model, you know, and someone needs to come back and change a dimension, then the drawing looks like the sketch, dimensions are in easily readable places, you know, and it's a good chance that the dimensions of the drawings are the ones that are actually important in real life. So absolutely agree with that, not just for speed modeling, but for how to approach making part for a robust real engineering model. Yeah, and I think that that's, uh, that's kind of the, the, the whole thing with this. Like a lot of times people, they talk about this idea of like, what uh what is the point of speed modeling and i think that it's a weird it's a it's a very weird argument to me like i do not understand this argument at all because to me it's kind of like it's not like you have to not be accurate like the entire basis of their argument is well i worked with this guy once and he would always do stuff fast and never define anything and his model sucked so therefore, there's no value in speed modeling. <laughs> and I'm like, well, that's a pretty uh, uh, both anecdotal and uh, a very limited position that you're taking there. Where for me, I'm kind of like, if I, if I, I have an electrician friend, and so like, bef if he's gonna come over one night and I'm trying to do some kind of a project, I'll do as much of it as I can on my own, you know, and then. And it takes me hours. Like, it's like all this planning, all this stuff. And then he shows up and he's like, what are you doing? Like, Give me that. And he's like, Psh, like one tool. He just uses one tool. He uses like a like a flathead screwdriver. And he's like, Psh, Psh, rips the, the, the sheeting off the uh, outside of the wiring. And then he like runs it in real quick. And he's like, Psh, 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 Psh. and it's beautiful. It's like so much more beautiful than the work that I did. And he just does it all so fast. And, it's, and the point is that like, he's learned over years and years of practice and repetition how to utilize every tool that's in his toolkit. And he just like knows if something goes slight, like when he's doing those wires and making them look beautiful, well, they don't automatically look beautiful, but he's doing all this little stuff with like his wrist and his forearm. And like, he's, he's got all these different tools that I haven't been exposed to yet that he has been just through repetition and repetition and repetition. And that's, that's what I'm talking about. Like, that's why we're doing all this because then when you get into the real world and you need to make something like this, this bracket thing this undermount. Well, the approach that you use is going to be both robust and fast. You can have both as my good friend would say, it's not either, or it's both and more shout out to Damien for that one. So 
Let's see what our chat came up with for this. Let's see if anybody was able to come up with the right answer in the speed modeling challenge. So it looks like the first answer that came in was from Airwick. Airwick has been on an absolute tear. The past uh, two, at least the past two episodes, he swept both of the challenges. I can't remember if he did it in the the in the past three episodes or not. Sorry, Airwick. Uh, so 1613, we will see if that is correct. Rich K came in 1624 and then revised to 1608. Uh, Core came in with 1613. Rich K revised again to 1613 and says, forgot the fillets. Oh, that'll do it. And uh, looks like that is all the answers that we got on this one. So let's see what we got. Is it correct? 1613 is the correct answer. So congratulations to Airwick for getting that right first. But congratulations to everyone for doing this challenge. Um, I hope you guys enjoyed this. But very, very nice Airwick. And we got Victor K in the chat now. And so I'm willing to bet that he's going to give this next one a shot as well. But very, very nice Airwick. Let's see if you can, if you can sweep this thing, if you can get both of them. Because our next challenge is coming live in 3, 2, 1 go and this one is a sheet metal challenge so a sheet metal challenge says need, says victor case is working late need a break from reverse engineering well here you go here's a nice sheet metal challenge the default wall thickness is three millimeters the default bend radius is three millimeters we got symmetry in two directions we got this cool uh it's called a lifter i uh sheet metal lifter sm lifter is the name of this part mmgs plain carbon steel 7,800 kilograms per cubic meter. And um, what do you guys think about this one? This is a pretty cool one. What do you think, Honest? Oh, man. Looking at this part, you know, it's it would be tricky to get all the dimensions to line up just right. Um, I think with sheet metal, I think each tool kind of has its own way of um, automating, you know, the break, sorry, the um, around the bends, like preventing um, clearances for the break that you're going to use. And otherwise, kind of each system does it a little bit differently. So I think it's going to be really interesting to see how people come up with ways to get the exact same result out of different CAD systems for sheet metal. I mean, sheet metal in and of itself, it's like, you know, you can have a similar part, but it's it's, it's more of an art than a science, I guess, sometimes with sheet metal to get the dimensions just right. Um, it might need a few prototypes to get it just right for what you're looking for. Of course, I'm rambling a lot. I don't really know what I'm talking no, about. No, it's a great way of saying that it. many sheet metal parts, but... Yeah, I mean, yeah. I got my start doing sheet metal design. Uh, that's like where I started when I uh, when I very first started in industry. And what you're saying is exactly correct. And even even when you have, you know, the print looking good, it's, it's, it's also dependent on uh, the machine that you're using, the tool that's in that, that machine, like the type of bender that's in that machine. Uh, it's dependent on, uh, it can even <laughs> sometimes be dependent on temperature. Like there's, there's a lot of things that factor into how the bends actually deform and what you end up with, with your total lengths. And so, uh, yeah, you're absolutely right. There is a lot that goes into it. Uh, and that's, you know, that means that when we're creating these, these prints here on Model Monday Live, we have to take that into account as well. So for example, in this print, in the top view, uh, there's a dimension that's called out for the beginning of those slots, as well as the width of those slots of like the, the clearance uh, slot there. And that's something that I just had to do because if, like you said, if somebody, if I just left it as like use the system default, well, that could be anything on any system, you know, it could be way different. I will say one thing that's kind of interesting about my system personally, SolidWorks 2015, is that it always ticks this option on for uh, offset bend, and that makes your um, edge flanges stick out by like some odd amount, like 1.3 millimeters. And then I look at the print and I'm like, I'm not getting the right mass. <laughs> <laughs> and then I remember like, oh yeah, for some reason 2015 just always ticks that on. And I remember I was uh, doing a live stream the one night and somebody in the chat was like, my 2015 does that too. So it's some kind of like little 2015 bonus functionality that lets you, you know, lets you practice remembering to do things. All right, let's get back into it here. This is a good song to get back into it on. Hope everybody's enjoying the music this season. We're going to make a uh, Too Tall Toby modeling music. Victor K says, side hole dim. Side view hole dim. Yep, you are correct, Victor. It's 30. <laughs> wow. Here we go. I'm going to make mistakes. And there's the mistake that I made. This one. It's 30. Sorry, guys. Missing dimension. 30. I should probably check that real quick, too. 
me go to this one here. All right, Alanis. I'm going to check this. I'm going to ask you to tell a story. Tell us a story about the tournament. Oh, a story about the tournament. Yeah. I mean, there's so many places to go with this. <laughs> yeah, I guess, do you want to talk about close calls for times I thought I might get eliminated? Let's do what close do you calls, yeah. You remember anything specifically? Oh, yeah. So that, there was this tray in finals that had a bunch of holes in it, had these little trapezoidal rails that running down the bottom. Mm -hmm. That one, man, that was just so close. You know, um, Ivan and I, we were <laughs> both kind of like neck and neck with that one. You know, Ivan got a mess in before me, but it was a little bit off. And I mean, that, I think that was the closest point in the tournament. Because there were some times, you know, where I got totally smoked, you know, like I made two wrong answers and at that point I'm a sitting duck, you know. But that that time, I think it was the closest in terms of like, we're both finishing the model at the same time. Okay, who's going to have the right mass? And that was terrifying to me, I think. Yeah, that was that. And that was, like you said, I mean, that would have been it. If Ivan would have gotten that, that would have been it. It would have been game over. And it was... Uh, Absolutely. Yeah, it doesn't get much closer than that. That was an excellent story. And it was the perfect amount of time because I was able to get <laughs> this diameter in here uh hopefully well there we go okay can't be 30 it is 30 it's gotta be let's go back to our full screen here there you go <laughs> totally not not noticeable what i did there <laughs> that's a through hole <laughs> with a 30 millimeter diameter all right If you guys want to take a quick screen capture of that again, I do apologize. You know, I think that tournament, tournament was honestly maybe the most exciting part of my fall. Because, you know, there were close calls, there were trials and tribulations, excitement, very close to elimination, all that sort of stuff. Um, honestly, each of the finals ones, I, I got really spooked for each of the finals rounds. The first round, you know, two wrong answers, that's not a good start. The second one, you know, we're both submitting masses at the same time. You know, that's not a good either. And then for the last one, when I saw that it was a sheet metal model, I thought, uh-oh, I have not practiced sheet metal. I'm all in on the not sheet metal parts. I thought if I just practice those, you know, it'll be fast enough and that'll be good enough. Yeah. So when I saw it, I thought, is this going to be sheet metal? Am I just going to get completely obliterated? But then I noticed that there was that one little funky place, which wasn't a sheet metal bend. And I realized, oh, wait, this is okay. Solid modeling. I might still have a chance. Yep. So... Each of those final rounds, it was just, um, I thought I got, would get eliminated multiple times every round, really. Yeah, it was, I thought it was pretty, uh, pretty darn good, man. That it was, it, it's like you said, it was exciting. There was like, it was neck and neck. There were so many times when person one submitted the answer and person two was like one second behind them. I mean, it was very exciting, uh, for, for, you know, people like you and I who are, who, that's the kind of stuff that we think is exciting for some people, you know, it's different things for different people. Some people it's like a good hockey game or a good football game, you know, or whatever. But for us, I think it, it doesn't really get much better than, uh, seeing two people wielding their, you know, their craft in a way that is, uh, you know, very exciting. So it was cool. And it was really cool, I think, to see as a spectator. It was very cool to see like two different experts using two different CAD systems and almost like mirroring one another as far as their times, like deep into these models, you know, not not right in the beginning. Sometimes in the beginning, they take slightly different approaches. But as it got down to like the final three or four features, a lot of times they would converge and it's like they were doing the same thing. They would even be rotating the screen the same way. And it just it looked like you were just looking at like two like the same screen just doubled. You know, I thought that was so cool and, and just how frequently it happened. I thought it was very cool. Yeah, you know, and I, on the excitement of like, is this just exciting for CAD people or also exciting for others? Well, I heard anecdotally that apparently my cousin was watching this at a bar on his phone and he and his buddies started watching this CAD tournament instead of the World Cup. So I <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> Yeah, that's so, awesome. That is Yeah, awesome. I think this CAD speed running, I think it's really just something that anyone can get into. Yeah. Really be excited by. Yeah, well, that's good to hear. That's, that's where it's going, I think. I think that's where it's all going. All right, well, cool. Well, uh, I think that if you're if you're down for it, I know that some people in the chat were asking if maybe uh, we could we could have you show off some of your skills in Onshape 
Um, so maybe I'll just talk just for a moment here about some stuff that's going on in, in my calendar. Be sure to check out, if you go to twotoby.com slash calendar, uh, the calendar does show kind of everything that we're doing as far as live streaming goes. I did spend a lot of time all throughout January and throughout some of February, uh, throughout some of December, uh, doing some free training on the modeling of a bass guitar. And so what I did was just start to finish, I created the assembly of this red bass guitar that's behind me here in SolidWorks and just did a series of live streams kind of showing you all the steps along the way and talking through how I'm doing it. So if you're just getting into CAD or if you know somebody who's just getting into CAD, it might be a cool thing to show them uh, to kind of see some, uh, you know, basic foundations of how you get started with a project. If you're more advanced in CAD, well, you could watch it and look for some of the advanced tips and tricks that I dropped throughout that. So uh, definitely something worth checking out. I also want to mention that on the, the Two Tall Toby website in the, um, uh, there's a section on the Two Tall Toby website called Leaderboard. So if we go to tooltalltoby.com and we go to uh, Leaderboard here, there's a challenge that I posted where I challenged the participants to do three models in a row as quickly as they can. So it's like a speed modeling challenge, but instead of just doing one model, you do three in a row. And it's also a little different from what we do on Model Money Live and what we do during the tournament, because you can look at the model over and over and over again, and you can try over and over and over again. And I don't know if you saw this today, Honest, but over the weekend, Eric did one completely on mobile. Oh my gosh, that's so exciting to see. Yes, this is absolutely epic so i'm uh i'm very much looking forward to uh getting some more attention on this but he did it he did the whole thing in less than 10 minutes he did all three models in less than 10 minutes on a completely mobile device he's on like a, i think he's on a galaxy s22 an android phone so this is just unbelievable to me <laughs> like, yeah it's pretty amazing i mean with onshape the trick is all the heavy lifting happens on the cloud so it doesn't matter whether you have an iPhone or an Android or a Mac or a Linux or a PC, you know, I mean, heck, you could probably run it on a smart fridge if you wanted to, because all of the kind of geometry crunching and heavy lifting happens on really powerful servers. So what that means is, you know, you can use this really lightweight little interface and it'll run basically just as fast as it would on um, a huge computer. So that's one of the really exciting things about Onshape, I think. Yeah. And it's just like all the times that I uh, would go like away from my computer with a notepad to get like the functional dimensions, you know, to be able to just to input them right on my phone in a model and then go back to my computer and just have that same model there and be able to continue working right from there. Like it's so exciting to me. So I'm, uh, I'm excited to, to learn more about this and to, uh, and to learn more about Onshape. I mean, I'm definitely going to be spending a lot more time, uh, actually diving into Onshape this year. I hope you're going to be around. I'm going to have some questions for you for sure. So, I hope that you'll be willing to help me out. Yeah, absolutely. Anytime, Toby. All right, cool. Well, anyhow, um, I just wanted you guys to know that this leaderboard is up. Uh, it's We've got, I guess, just one more day. And then the leaderboard for January closes. And, uh, and then we'll do another one for February. We'll give you some new models in February and we will uh, you know, give you guys a chance to give it a try again. We've got Victor, che in, Victor K in the chat. I see Victor K is here on the board. So uh, you know, let's see let's see if anybody else wants to get in here, get their time submitted. I think this is actually an outdated leaderboard here. The top four people now are SolidWorks, Onshape, Fusion 360, and Inventor. So the top four people are using four different CAD systems, which I think is just so perfect. Like it's just, yeah, makes me smile big time. Oh, this is what that bass guitar uh, looked like. Um, it's got, it's actually got the strings on it. We did get it to completion. We got it exactly to where I wanted it. So it's got the strings on it now. It's got uh, everything. All the electronics have been wired on the inside. There's actually a truss rod going up through the neck. So it's a full, you know, full start to finish bass guitar. Very cool. And uh, I mentioned this earlier, but if you're just getting started in CAD, be sure to check out the practice models videos. They are a great way to get started and to uh, get some practice. And so with that, I think I'm going to turn the screen over to you, Alness. Um, and uh, what I would love to do is maybe uh, take a look at what you're doing in Onshape here. And, and uh, maybe you could show us a sample print and just kind of talk us through like how you would think through it with your uh, speed modeling prowess. Uh, what are some things that you would commonly do when you're looking at a model? Like if somebody gave you this, if they said, hey, can you, you know, here's a hand sketch, here's a napkin sketch of something that we need out in the shop. How would you go about strategizing how to create that model? Absolutely. So here's this model that um, Toby gave to me, and I'm going to go ahead and walk through what my approach is when I'm speed modeling. 
So the first thing that I look for is symmetry, because symmetry is really helpful, not just from a modeling perspective, but also helps if you can have symmetric parts where then you don't have a left-handed and a right-handed version, but you have the same one. So in terms of manufacturing and stocking, it's less stuff to keep track of. Um, also from a machining perspective, it's easier if you don't have to think about the left side and the right side and accidentally you move one thing on the other side and suddenly you scrap three hours of work on a part. So that's <laughs> the number one thing. First is, you know, like what's the symmetry here? In this case, we're given that we have left-right symmetry. We don't have symmetry along other axes, but that's already going to give us a clue to the next thing. So the next thing is we want to figure out where do we want to kind of um, have it oriented and where do we want to have its base planes or kind of like datum planes. So in this case, for the orientation of this, it looks like it's following general conventions for drawings where you have the front view down here, top view up there, right view there um, for ANSI drawings. So that's probably how I'm going to orient my model. Because then that means as I'm looking at the model, you know, it's the same as what I'd expect in the drawing. There's no surprises about which way some dimension's going to go. And also for the origin of it, I'm going to look at what's kind of the planes that are unlikely to change, or there's a lot of dimensions referenced off of them. So for example, if we look at the back of this part here, we've got the 65 dimension going off of it. We've also got this 30 dimension going off of it. And we've got this 100 millimeter dimension going off of it too. So it seems like if I were going to model this part, which I'll try to do pretty quickly now, hopefully I don't get it wrong. <laughs> um, I'm probably going to be putting it with this being the front plane over here. I'm going to be modeling it, sticking it out of the front plane, um, centered overall. And then I still have to think, you know, like, what do I actually want to be the top plane? In this case, I'm probably going to choose this overall top surface up here with the hole in it as the top plane, just because it seems like there's a section of the model above it and a section of the model below it. So that's really where I'm starting. Now, you'll notice I've talked already a lot without actually pulling anything up on my screen. But that's one of the huge things about speed modeling is you have to have a good approach for how you're going to make it before you start modeling. So I'm going to go ahead and make a new part studio here and let's go ahead and get cracking. So is like new part studio kind of like a part template? Yeah, so it's kind of a part modeling environment. And actually, okay. you have part studios and assemblies. Essentially, part studios are for defining geometry. You can model multiple parts in the same part studio. And then assemblies is where you add motion, your bill of materials, uh, you link in other content, etc. Okay. So starting out, I guess what we can look at is there's this nice profile on the side that we could try sketching, but the tricky thing is we have a radius dimension up here. So I'm instead going to start on the top plane. And by the way, for everyone watching, this is the first time I'm actually making this model. So everything you see is a genuine reaction. <laughs> now, you know, I, I, think, I remember you told me that before the uh, before the live stream. Yeah. But the thing is, I think that you have forgotten, maybe because it was so uh, traumatic, that this was actually one of the parts that you did in the tournament. <laughs> oh my gosh! Well, clearly my memory's a little bit fuzzy. <laughs> I haven't been sleeping much lately, you know. I, <laughs> no, I but I know the feeling because like there's there was parts that I made for the tournament and then like two weeks later I'm like, hey, did we ever use this part? Like, can I use this one? And then I have to go back and rewatch the footage. I'm like, oh yeah, we did use that one. So I definitely mm, yeah. know the feeling. Yeah, so to start out, what I see is I have this 100 dimension going this way. Then for the overall width of the part, it's actually defined by this radius there. So I won't add that dimension. But what I'll start is I'll actually add a midpoint rectangle running from this point down here up to snapping next to the origin here. Now, this has been a really fancy trick. Basically, what I've constrained is that it's symmetrical now. So we have a center point on the center, and it's also constrained so that the back of it runs all the way up there. Now, what I can do in Onshape is I can move my mouse close to one of these dimensions, and I can start typing a number. So in this case, I'm going to type 100, and it's going to add a 100 millimeter dimension because it noticed that my mouse was close to there. Now, if next we have that arc down there. So I'm just going to draw an arc here, drag, snap, and then snap it over there. And for this, I can type in a radius of 40 millimeters. And I already have a fully defined sketch. Wow. So it's that quick, you know, drag, snap, drag, snap, some dimensions, etc. And we can do our first extrude. So I'm going to extrude, uh, what's that dimension going down there? Looks like it's a 21 millimeter dimension. And I'm going to extrude down just to keep this top face as a place where we can kind of work with that upper area. Now for this profile over here on the side, I'm going to again look over here. There's a really nice sketch profile we could use. And I'm doing something a little bit unconventional. Rather than sketching directly on the right plane, I'm sketching on this face. But um, that's going to let me define the design intent of this flange a little bit, or I don't know if flange is the right word. It'll let me define a little bit more easily updatably, if that's a word. So I'm going to start by drawing a line down here, and I click it here. Now, you can see it's already constrained to be vertical, but we don't have a length yet. So I'm going to go, and I'll go ahead and I'll type 25 millimeters there. Now, again, I'm going to snap over here onto this line here. And I'm going to add one last line over here, closing this up. I don't actually need to close it. You can already see there's a closed region here. But the trick is, if I add a line over here, then I can type in the dimension, the 65 over there. And I've never even had to select the dimension tool, and I already have a fully defined sketch. Wow. Now I'm going to extrude that sketch. And um, oh, looks like there's some issue with the face. This sometimes happens if you sketch on a face and you have a funky intersection with what you're doing. So I'm just going to clear that out and select the face again here. And for the end condition, I'm going to go up to face. So now I'm going to go up to here. 
And what the advantages of using these sort of face references is, if I go back into this original sketch, and um, let's go ahead and pull this radius out so we can see it, I can go out to the final dimension here, and if I go and I start scrolling on this dimension here, the whole part adjusts and adapts to that dimension. So rather than typing in that dimension as some sort of symmetric extrude or otherwise fiddling around with it, um, we have this really responsive model that we can use straight away. And you're just using the now, scroll wheel there? Yeah, so in Onshape, um, whenever you have a dimension and you're editing it, you can just scroll on it. And for bigger increments, you can use shift scroll. So this is great in assemblies if you're just tweaking the um, orientation of a mate or something like that. Yep. Um, and you can also use command scroll or control scroll. I can't remember what it is on Mac. Oh, whoops, maybe that was the wrong one. But in any case, you can use the scroll wheel to quickly tune up your model and see um, what would happen if I changed the dimension. Yeah, very cool. And if you click the final button, it also previews what the whole model will look like. So that means that as you're tweaking the dimension, you know, the whole model updates. All right, so I'll leave it at 40 millimeters there. Sorry, I, I'm going too slow. This is not speed modeling. This is slow modeling. No, no, no. This is good. This is <laughs> this is very cool. I mean, there's a lot of people who haven't had a chance to see on shape, and, and we've seen you use it in speed modeling, but this is a great opportunity just to kind of see some of the, the I think it's a perfect speed you're going at. Cool. Well, then up next, I think rather than doing the hole, I'll leave the hole for last um, while we're on the topic of sketching stuff. And I'm going to go ahead and I'll sketch on this back plate face over here. So I'm going to start a sketch on there by clicking that and pressing Shift S. And now I'm going to orient myself to the back here. Now, um, one thing to note here is that we don't actually have an offset right there. So I'm going to really quickly show um, what I mean there. But if we go ahead and we draw a rectangle, I'm again going to use the snap the center point there, and I'm going to snap the point down there and enter the dimension for the height. So I think this is 45. So we already have this fully constrained rectangle, but unfortunately we can't just go in offset um, in order to get our geometry out. So what, I'm going to delete this line really quick here just to show you. Um, oh, whoops. Never mind. Actually, I'm not going to delete it. Never mind. I'll just show why, you what it looks like if I don't delete it. Why can't you just offset to get the geometry? So we can't offset the, to get the geometry. So I could like drag this geometry over here and try to offset it like that. But that's not the design intent that we have in the drawing. We have different thicknesses, 10 uh, millimeters over there and 15 right there. So it's a little bit of a tricky situation there. So I'm going to go ahead and I'll undo that. And instead, I'll just add a second rectangle. And I'll do again use that snapping trick, but this time I'll start using dimensions here. So this over here is 10 millimeters, and then this dimension up here is 15. That's pretty okay, cool. Okay, well, we have most of the profile now, um, but we still have those fillets to add. Now, personally, I do actually kind of like adding some fillets in the sketch if it is the profile, because the profile, you know, it's kind of nice to be able to think about it all in one place, you know, and be able to modify are there fillets, are there not fillets, are they different fillets, etc. I'll use constraints with the fillets, etc. Um, so I generally use fillets if it's a 3D feature, but then if it's a 2D profile, you know, like some sort of beam that I'm extruding or something like that, I'm going to actually include the fillet in the sketch. Now, I know this isn't necessarily best practice, but I think in this case, it does help clarify what's going on. So to add the fillets over here, I can just click on the corners by activating the fillet tool. And I could drag them around if I wasn't sure about the size of them, but I'm going to go ahead and type in the actual number over here, which is 15. Oh, no, not 15. 20 millimeters from the drawing. No, that's not the right one. <laughs> Clearly, I'm not speed modeling here. Sorry, I'm going to type in 20 millimeters here from the drawing that we have for that fillet. And then finally, we have the same fillets over here. So these two points. And let's go ahead and um, make that radius be five millimeters. So that's how I go ahead and approach this. One other thing to note is I'm able to activate and dismiss tools actually just with my mouse. I've got this gaming mouse over here, like Logitech MMO yeah. gaming mouse. And all these buttons over here, they're mapped to a bunch of different things. So that means that it's not just like enter and escape and whatever, so I can activate and deactivate tools faster. There's also some view manipulation stuff. All right, but I've been talking enough. I need to get through this model. So I'll go ahead and I'll select this face in the sketch before extruding. And then I can just hit the extrude key and we get this over here. We want it going that way. And I think for the distance, what do we have in the drawing? We had a distance of 30 millimeters here. Cool, so we've got 30 millimeters for that distance there. And the last thing that we have is the hole. For holes, I always like to use the hole tool in Onshape. I don't trust myself to do revolves reliably or extrudes like that. So I'm going to go ahead and switch it from simple to counterbore. And for the center of the hole, I actually don't need to drop a point or anything. You can use this thing called an implicit make connector in Onshape. Essentially, these are snap points for stuff. So you can snap to the centers of arcs. You can snap to the midpoints of edges. Wow, you can snap to all center of, of the whole face. Yeah. That's so in cool. this case, yeah, so what we're going to want to do, it looks like the hole is centered inside this arc right here. Mm -hmm. So I can just click on the face and near the center right there, and it'll add a counter bore. Now, this counter bore is a little bit, I don't know, it's a little bit small. <laughs> it doesn't quite look right. So what I can do next is I can actually adjust the dimensions of the counter bore here. Now, fortunately, the convention in drawings is to say the through size, then the counter bore size, and the depth. And that's the same order in the on-shape drawing. So I can just go ahead and I can type 20 tab 
what's that 40 tab 10 and then that's let me enter the counterboard dimensions wow. just like that it's fast and yeah so that's that's one of the great things you know it's like if you can just use the tab key to go through it's just like it's just data entry and then you got your model and in this case i just have it through so there's no depth for it it's just all the way through the part and i think we have the part ready now so if I were in a competition, the way I would do it is um, check the masses, just use a custom table. So this is, I believe, Eric Pesty from the Onshape forums created this custom feature, which gives you all the masses and a bunch of different materials here. So I can just go say, ah, 1060 alloy, that's going to be the mass right there. But if this were an actual production part, you know, we want to make sure our bill of materials is right. I'd right click on the part, I'd go ahead and assign material. And then in this case, I'll use the two tall Toby material library right here. And I'm going to go ahead and choose 1060 alloy. So this means if we were to put it in a bomb or something like that, we're going to get a correct mass out. If I click the mass properties down here, we get a number right here that actually does agree with the panel over there. It's faster to go to the panel, but it's more correct to use the mass properties. So that's it's about it. Very, very about cool. Yeah, one question came in. It was from Building with Logan, and he said, can mm -hmm. you link that mass feature script that you use or let him know where to find that? I know you yeah, absolutely. mentioned a person. Here, I'll go ahead and I'll open up um, the document right here and I'll paste it in YouTube chat. Hopefully it doesn't get marked as spam. Okay. Possibly you might need to approve the uh, message, Toby. Okay. But it's crazy. It's, it's just that easy to install extensions in Onshape. You know, you open up the document. I've got the custom tables button right here, custom features button right there. If you want to install this, you just click custom tables and you click on the two tall Toby part mask and boom, it's right there in your custom tables thing. So it's really amazing <laughs> so cool. how extensive Onshape is. Yeah. Very awesome. And uh, Lillian is here and says, hola. And Iron Man says, awesome, allness. Very nicely done. <laughs> very, very nicely done. Thanks, folks. And I hope I got the right mask, Toby. Did I get the right mask? Yeah. I don't remember either. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> OK. <laughs> I don't remember either. I oh, haven't... and then the last tip and trick I'd like to show is if you are still struggling to figure out what's going on with your model, if you go ahead and go to the hidden edges visible view mode, and hide your planes, you suddenly get something that looks just like a drawing. So that means that you can go and you can start checking your drawing views. You know, like, do I see all the same edges that I would expect in the drawing as I do in the part? Yeah. So that's really great to see if you've missed some features, you know, changing the view mode like that. Yeah, so I guess in this case, it does look pretty much correct, but um, that's about that. Yeah, and that was T14 stop block. Yep, 861.1 grams. Awesome. Yeah. And then if you switch the phantom edges over here, it looks even cooler, you know, where you got the dashed lines running. It really looks like you got a technical drawing just in 3D. Yeah, that is cool. Man, all right, awesome. Well, I think that's great, great timing too. We're kind of winding down on the end of the show here, but Alness, thanks so much for showing us some of your secrets as the uh, world champion speed modeler. There's only one champion in the world and it's you. So thank you for uh, taking the time to show us, to show our you know the most amazing chat ever uh some of your some of your moves there some of your secrets it's pretty cool i think that the uh the big one that i took away from that was just learning how to effectively use the uh center point rectangle to auto center your geometry i also when you were creating the triangular shape that's on the bottom of this part you did a really cool move where when you sketch the uh upper horizontal line the other 65 line it dropped in at like 61 and then you were able to immediately auto dimension, essentially like auto dimension it. That's pretty different from how we do it in SolidWorks. In SolidWorks, if we did that, it would it would take at least one additional move because um, it will either drop the line directly on there and then you have to smart dimension, add the dimension, or you can make it 65, but then it's not gonna merge those endpoints. In the case of the workflow you just showed, you actually get the best of both worlds. You can merge the endpoint and input the, the correct uh, dimension. Yeah, since after you drop the point, so while it's going over there, you see the number so you can estimate for what it'll be. But then after you add it, it draws a little box around it so you can start typing. Like I could make this 90 right there and I can go and I can constrain it and snap it however I want. And then after the fact, enter the dimension, which really accelerates a lot of um, the workflow there. Yeah, I like that workflow for sure. I can definitely get into that one. Cool, man. Well, I'm going to flip back to the PowerPoint here, but thank you again very much for showing us that, for showing us some of your secrets. Uh, guys, if you want to see more of his secrets, you can check out the uh, the tournament footage that we've got on the YouTube channel. Um, and I, uh, oh, that was that final part right there. We're never gonna forget that one. We oh. got we got to send that one over to uh, to Ivan, right? Yeah, I'm actually gonna post a link in the chat. You can actually go ahead and copy the copy this document. See how I approach all these models. So um, there's a link to it in the chat if you want to see how I modeled all the stuff for the championship. Oh, that'd so be just great. Just go ahead and open in your browser, and you can see it. So wait now, did you did you drop in both of those? Um, 
I'll have to take a look here. I'm not seeing any of the stuff coming through. And it's not even giving me the warning, oh, okay. so. Um, oh, well. Yeah, maybe if you drop it into our meeting in the chat, then uh, okay. I can I can probably extract it from there and then share it with everybody. Sounds good, yeah. yeah. So I'm open sourcing all my competition models, so you can go ahead and take a look at how I approach them. <laughs> it's awesome, man. Well, thank you. <laughs> thank you, thank you, thank you for doing that. Um, and once those come in, I will uh, share them out to everybody. And with that, let me take a look back at the PowerPoint and we'll see if we can't uh, come up with an answer to this final challenge. Guys, if you've enjoyed this this uh, this discussion tonight, be sure to show some support. You can like this, uh, this live stream. You can add some comments down below if you're watching in the recording. You can subscribe if you want to throw in some uh, financial support. We've got Super Chat. We've got Super Thanks. We've got PayPal. And, uh, of course, be sure to share and reshare. And what an honor to be here with you tonight on us, uh, the uh, world champion speed modeler. And we also have a lot of people in the chat talking about this jog feature. They are not happy with this jog feature. I got to say, I don't know if you've been watching any of this chat, but they are, uh, they're really, uh, they're really talking it up. What do you think about this jog feature? It's a sheet metal challenge, oh, right? Oh, man. <laughs> sheet metal jogs, that seems like... A bit of a pain to manufacture and a bit of a pain to model so yeah i mean interesting stuff all around why are you so cruel toby giving us these <laughs> challenges right well we'll get through here and we'll talk a yeah. little bit about this let's see what people had to say iron man made a little poop emoji that's pretty cool a little neon colored poop emoji uh let's see here side view hole from victor thank you victor for that again apologize to everyone but that side view hole should be 30. eric coming in with an answer of 395. is eric gonna sweep again at least three weeks in a row Sweeping every model. Let's see if he does it. Eric is a champ. Let's see here. We got a super chat coming in from Hell Yeah. Allness is a true champion for open sourcing. What a nice compliment. Thank you very much, Hell Yeah. Very much appreciate. Very, very much appreciate the support. Thank you, thank you, thank you. All righty. Let's see here. What else we got here? Man, I cannot figure out this jog. Cheap metal is rusty. Just going to hang out in the chat and fiddle with this later. <laughs> Victor K. All right, fair enough, Victor K. Just going to hang out in the chat. I'll, I'll do a tutorial on this one at some point in the near future. He might jog is in the wrong spot as well, but as long as it's the right answer, I think I can get the mask correct. I have an exploit for the win. Is that correct? No, that's not correct, because these holes are going to be at a different location. I don't know, maybe he figured out a way to get it correct. I guess we'll find out in a minute. 370.16. Yeah. interesting to see. Yeah, Logan coming in 370.16 as well. There's no actual jog feature. Yep, forgot to tag you. Okay. All this, can you share the, the thing? Yep, we're going to try and get that out to you in the chat. If I, uh, Logan, if I can't get it in the chat, I'll drop it in the description of the video. Um, so just like refresh the video a couple minutes after the stream ends and it should be in there. Um, and, and same thing with the, uh, let me see, you got both the stuff. Let's just try it. We'll try it right now. So this is link number one. Let's see if this goes through. It looks like it did. And link number two. I'm not sure which is which on these, but if you guys want to let me know if those links went through, um, then I will know if I need to include them in the description as well. I'll try to include them in the description too, just because. I can see it on my end. So hopefully it went through for the chat too. Okay, awesome. Thank you. And Logan coming in, 370.16, nicely done. And Rich K coming in, 370 grams, very nice. SolidWorks is a jog feature, but I can't figure it out for the life of me. And edge flanges aren't the best. Yeah, we're definitely gonna have to do a tutorial on this one. We'll, we'll show you how to do it all, don't worry. This one is definitely, it's definitely solvable. Alrighty, alrighty, alrighty. Got them. Logan got them. He says, thank you. Thank you. And Eric confirming the game through. All right. Awesome. All right, guys. Let's see. Is Eric going to be the undisputed champ three weeks in a row? Yes, he is. 370 grams plus or minus two grams. Very nice job to Logan and to Rich K as well. Getting through those. GG to everyone. Very, very nice job. Eric, GG, GG, GG. Triple GG for three weeks in a row. Very, very nicely done. And congrats Huge to congrats. our winners. That is really impressive. To yeah. go three in a row. Wow. Three in a row getting both models. Three weeks in a row, both models. And possibly a fourth week. I'm going to have to go back and look. Sorry, Eric. If you know, you can just correct me in the chat. I'll take it. All right. 
Cool, guys. Well, that's going to be uh, the end of our live stream tonight. I want to say thank you all so much. Eric, I agree. We do need more participants in these live streams. I think it's a... Uh, I might not have picked the best time of day of week to do it. I'm going to do it a few more weeks in a row, see if I can get people. Uh, but uh, don't think I made it to the first. Oh, the very first one of the year. Yeah, maybe not. If you guys need new hardware, be sure to check out Solid Box. They will help you by removing any of your professional IT. Uh, you don't need them. You don't need a professional IT team anymore. You just need Solid Box. They'll take care of everything. MySolidBox.com. Make sure you tell them that Toby sent you. Uh, remember to check out the bass guitar modeling uh, live streams that we did. How to build a bass guitar in SolidWorks. We got all the live streams posted. They're in the calendar. They are on the channel. Uh, all the live streams are there so you guys can learn how to build a bass guitar from start to finish. This thing came out awesome. Uh, I'll have some more um, images of this bass guitar of what we finally did with it. But the cool thing is that it... It teaches you how to do it in a way that you can easily pack and go and make a new version of it and make changes to the new version and make like it's just it's just all cool stuff whatever i can talk about all the different things it's amazing it's amazing and tonight you guys were the first ones to find out the big news cad versus cad tournament saturday november 11th 2023 will be the date of the semifinals and the final battle and uh we'll have a lot of dates working up to that but the cad versus cad 3d cad speed modeling world championship 2023 is officially announced. More details coming soon to tutaltoby.com. Uh, but 11 11 23. Yes, indeed. Yes, indeed. Lillian says, Glad I caught the last five minutes. Wish I could have participated in the mini competition. Well, feel free to do those practice models, Lillian. They are great practice to get you ready for next week. We're going to do some more Model Monday Live next week. Uh, but uh, feel free to do those practice models in the practice models playlist. That's a great way to it's a great way to get started, right? Honest, that's kind of how you got started, right? The practice models. Yeah, absolutely. Practice models are a really great way, not just to get ready for speed modeling, but also to just build up your CAD skills in general. Yeah, and you can always ask questions in there. And uh, I uh, I need to get a little more disciplined about providing solutions to each of them in like a. Yeah, I mean, you guys know just from watching this presentation. If, if, if this is the first time you see my presentations, I think you already know I get to be a little scatterbrained. I can't even finish one sentence. It's what it feels like. We're going to finish this one, though. Cad vs. Cad Tournament 2023 date has been announced. Thank you to the most amazing chat ever. You guys are great. Thank you, Alness, the most amazing guest of 2023 so far. You are outstanding. Thank you for being my guest. And thank you so much, Toby, for being the best host of 2023 so far also. <laughs> thank you. Yes. We're doing what we can over here. Uh, and thank you guys all for joining us tonight. And this is going to be the end. It was a lot of fun. And I'm looking forward to doing it again next week. Next week, we are going to do the drawing for the TTT t-shirt. So the leaderboard um, at tutaltoby.com is live and on that leaderboard the top from the top 10 people we're going to pick one person and we're going to send them a free t-shirt and uh and then in two days we're going to be maybe two maybe three days maybe later this week later this week at some point we're going to learn what the challenge for february looks like uh three new models for february uh some upgrades to our challenging system so it's going to be you know it's going to be fun we're going to continue to see the evolution all throughout the year um, and that's it. Thank you guys so much. It was awesome. Allness, you were awesome. Thank you so much. And we will see everybody next week. Any final thoughts on us? Oh, just wanted to say thank you so much, Toby, for being an excellent host. Subscribe to Toby. You know, check out the future stuff because there's so much good stuff coming down the line with CAD content and, I mean, stuff that's exciting even if you're not a CAD user. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, and uh, thank you so much for being my guest and thanks for doing the tournaments. I know you've done some in the past too and congratulations and uh, it was very well earned. You had to fight and slug through to get uh, to get that championship and you very much earned it. So uh, congratulations and enjoy it uh, because they're coming for you. Absolutely. <laughs> this next tournament is going to be so exciting. Yeah, this is going to be a good one. This is going to be, I got a feeling this is going to be a really, really big, big this is going to be the big one, I think. So this is going to be it. This is it. And we're right here on the ground level. And it feels pretty good to be here on the ground level. And uh, speaking of that, don't forget, guys, this week they figured out how to mint true images, true NFTs directly on Bitcoin. So there's your final news for the night. See you guys. <laughs>